Lady Ada. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day, everybody. Uh, thank you for uh, staying up late with us. Uh, today was not a great sleeping day, but uh, that's okay. <laughs> Uh, we got some good video instead. Uh, so, Mr. Lady Ada, do we have, or Daddy Ada, do we have any news updates that we want people to know? Yeah, well, first off, this was, uh, we were at Adafruit today at the factory, and our kiddo was uh, sort of taking a nap, but she was playing. We were playing uh, kids play. They they stick their hand outside the crib, and you, like, you know, you tickle them, and then they, they put their hand in, they play a little game. Um, no, we didn't kidnap a person. This isn't some, yeah, tw <laughs> Twitter man. <laughs> Twitter. Um, so anyways, I put it online because I'm like, oh, this is cute. This is like, the, you know, this is a tender, touching moment. People are like, oh, this is nice. I can. And then, of it's course, it's a crib, not a cake. And then, of course, Twitter's <laughs> some some guy on Twitter. Anyways, um, so the other thing that's going on besides Father's Day is tomorrow is Juneteenth. Adafruit has had this as an official holiday and we're not shipping tomorrow. So please keep that in mind. Uh, we'll be shipping on Tuesday. So if you order anything tonight, it will not ship until Tuesday and please check our blog for coverage and more stories of people and uh, some folks in the Adafruit community and our team are doing some things for Juneteenth so check out adafruit.com slash blog for more. Lady Ada, what is on your desk this week? Okay well we have a couple cool weird retro mailbag things. I'm still doing hardware but like I like to intersperse some of the hardware and, and hacking stuff with um, uh, some stuff that we get in the mail. So what do you want me to show the the McNugget Tetris or the DOS Tetris? Let's start off with the McNugget. So um, this is a Tetris game from McDonald's China. Yeah, well, maybe go to the computer and we'll, we'll, we'll do the whole intro. So Yeah, and um, it's been covered in some places, but I thought it would be great to get one and have Lady Ada take it apart. Okay. Um, so uh, let's, uh, let's just start it off. What, um... Oh, did you want to go to the computer? I could show. You want to do that? Oh, okay. Yeah, I could show this. Okay, so um, about 20 days ago, it, like three weeks ago, we saw, um, you know, articles about this, like, funky uh, if, giveaway, like, you know, Happy Meal toy that was a chicken nugget-shaped um, Tetris toy. And this is, like, everything I have always wanted in my childhood, I love chicken nuggets and I love Tetris. And so uh, it was really important for me to get one of these. So I had one of our uh, purchasers in China uh, pick one up and send it to me. Um, and they're they're bigger than you think. These are these are fairly large um, chicken nugget based uh, Tetris player. But I guess you can purchase you would purchase them or you got it with your Happy Meal anyways. So I got one. Uh, well, it comes in a little McNugget box. Cool. Yes, it got smuggled in. So I did open it already because I, you know, wanted to see what was going on. But let's let's show it on the overhead. All of this McNugget goodness. I think this is the first teardown that I've seen of the guts of it, and, and maybe what's in it. Okay. I, thought, I thought Lady Ada could talk. So about here's it. the thing. Actually, I messed this up because it turns out the box is actually like a McNugget box. Yeah. Like this is the same box the McNugget would come in. Yeah. You, I, I opened you it. Ripped it on the side like a raccoon. Yeah. You, that's how a raccoon opens up uh, McNuggets, lady. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you can see um, this actually did get, uh, you know, it, pay, it pays licensing official Tetris. Look at this. They've got like official Tetris product. And this is their little logo. So people know it's an official Tetris. And you can see there's a little uh, long Tetramino about to make a Tetroid, whatever they call it, for four bar uh tetris success um okay so i don't know I'm, I'm sure there's like names for all the different things like four bar clearing okay so this is um i just removed the screws you know there was there was a bunch of screws on the outside and i removed them it does come with double a batteries um ironically the screwdriver i picked out was like my heath kit screwdriver so uh like most kids toys it has a screw in to keep the batteries from getting open otherwise kids take out the batteries and eat them because they look like delicious candies um so it comes with two AAA batteries and they're already you know it was actually already in place so i didn't have to um, put the batteries in which makes sense like most people are not gonna have a screwdriver handy when they're at their mcdonald's and then there's an on off switch um off and then on and when you turn it on um you know it quickly lights up all of the segments so you can see that uh they're active one thing is um because i opened this i also opened up this i'll, I'll open up this later 
Um, this is a little loose, so the M sometimes doesn't light up. Yeah, there you go. And then uh, to actually activate it, there's a little power switch. And it does a little song, and it blinks. And then if you actually want to play, uh, you can select the levels. So you can see it can go level. You want to get to, like, level 15. Maybe I'll not start with level eight. And then uh, the thing that took me a while to figure out, you press pause to start. Oh my God, this is actually fairly hard. And then there's left, right, and then this is rotate. Except I can't, I'm not going to be able to play very well with uh, over a screen. But uh, so there's uh, up, down, left, sorry, up, down, um, sorry. Left, right, rotate, down fast, down, like instant down. So like immediately goes to the bottom and then just like sped up down. Although like the game is much faster than I remember. I, I kind of vaguely remember it being fairly um, slow um, for things to drop. And then there's also a speaker button um, if you don't want to have it beep so loudly. So let's take a look at what's going on inside. So I opened it up. Um, the screws, which is, I think it was kind of funny. The screws are triangle, uh, not Phillips or um, flathead. And I don't think that's any like, like, oh, we don't tamper proofness. I think just probably when you're torquing a lot of screws very quickly, maybe triangle is easier to get a good grip on. Maybe it's like less likely to strip. Um, but I just used um, a flathead, like, like my, my Weha flathead set, and it, uh, it was fine. Got good enough grip. I mean, it's only plastic. And then on the inside, um, there's a bunch of little um, Phillips. So let's open this. Let's see, I mean, it's it's always an epoxy blob, but you know maybe there's something to see with the epoxy blob. You can always learn something from any teardown. Maybe push it up a little bit more. Oh yeah. Higher. So there you go. One thing that's interesting is how recently that these were fabbed. I mean, this was a very quick build. These were manufactured in, um, you know, basically and you know, last day of February. Um, that's when the PCBs were made. And then they were immediately, um, you know, pick and placed um, and then assembled. And they made 500,000 of these. So that was very fast. And they, they were basically released, you know, within the last month. So it's been, it was like two months to manufacture uh, 500,000 pieces. McDonald's uh, knows how to do stuff in large quantities very quickly. Okay, so um, now we've got this PCB. So let's remove the PCB. Well, first off, let's let's make sure we turn this off, which is off. It's a good idea. Okay, so here is um, the circuit board. Um, so a couple interesting things here i mean not not surprising it's an epoxy blob it's a asic i'm sure it's a custom programmed you know whatever 8051 something cheap with uh write only memory sorry read only memory so you know, you, you write once and it's um the prom probably not flash but you never know and then um uh it's a single-sided pcb which i always think is great because it's like it's always fun to see how the routing is done. I mean, like you, you know, for five hundred thousand pieces, and they're probably like, well, maybe we'll release this in the U.S. later. Um, you know, the die they could probably request. Um, I mean, there's all these GPIOs, but maybe they could request the ordering to be a certain way. I don't know, or maybe they're just they really are plain GPIOs. These are LCD drivers. There's no there's no separate LCD chip. I don't think unless there's one bonded underneath. Um, it could, I don't think it was like a custom chip chip, but maybe there's a chip that is configurable enough that it wasn't too difficult to make this um, uh, layout. Looks like, yeah, there's no jumpers even. So everything was totally linear. It's kind of cute. And you can see the test pads here. These are all test points. So before they did the final assembly to make sure that the epoxy, under the epoxy, the wires were bonded correctly, they'd probe all these pads to make sure that, you know, all the signals were, you know, coming out properly. Because it's a lot, you know, they want to manufacture these as quickly as possible, verify, program them if necessary, or, you know, whatever, burn in that final firmware, and then 
test all the pads before doing the final assembly, since that's the most labor intensive part. Um, this part actually is ironically not very labor intensive because um, you know the PCB line is fully automated. Uh, so it's single sided PCB, and then uh, you know test pads everywhere, um, and then this is um, one elastomer piece. So you can see in this, you know, looks like yeah, it's probably a hassle coat or maybe an. It looks like it might be a very light gold coat. It's kind of got a little bit of a golden uh, color. Um, so this is a custom elastomer with, uh, these are called like uh, carbon pills. So little, um, so this is molded. And then these little um, black carbon conductive bits are glued in or molded in. Yeah, glued in. And then this is like the big button. And then these are the um, smaller buttons and then the directional pad. Um, you know, this is almost certainly not programmable, but you could probably hack the buttons if you wanted to have like different controls for, um, the, uh, the game. And then we've got, um, this is the battery port here. So a little bit of epoxy, which is nice. Uh, and then this is soldered nicely into the case that's molded in to the, um, the battery case that's molded in. Not surprisingly, you know, two AAA batteries gives you about like, you know, two and a half, three volts and you can run your lcd off of that and then uh there's one resistor here for the power switch i don't know clear what's up with that maybe it's a light pull down to act or whether it's um now what would it be for so this is the ground the two the two sides are ground and then the middle connects between the battery Yes. Oh, you know what? It's probably a um, draining resistor. So what happens is that um, when you turn it off, you know, you've cut power, but you want to make sure that the power is drained out, that it doesn't, like the LCD doesn't stay on, because it's probably a very low power setup. So this this is a 100 ohm resistor that when it's off, it connects between power and ground and just like the the fl now disconnected from the battery power and ground, the, the power on this chip to drain it completely, make sure there's no floating voltages at all. It keeps you from getting like weird, you know, the display might still be lit up and people are like, oh, is it really off or not? It's this way it like totally clears out the display instantly. And then um, over here is a piezo disc for the bleepy sound effects and some wires. Um, and the wires go into this. This is like a little driver chip. Um, interesting that, you know, it could be that this chip that was used here doesn't, was initially designed to do um, like a piezo beeper, so, or maybe it wasn't meant to run off of such a low voltage. So this might be a little driver. It might be a little, um, it might be a little booster, um, like a switch cap booster to get the 2.5 to 5 volts to get this um, nice and loud. Because I see two capacitors here, although this, unclear, this capacitor goes in here. Maybe this capacitor goes in there i mean this is a blank chip which i find kind of fascinating right like who like you know who's gonna care but there's no marking on it so it's been sanded off or you know they got the chip without printing on it so um but it's connected to the piezo and you can see that the two piezo pins are connected without like they're, they're not showing a ground so it's probably like some h bridgey type thing that just alternates the pins it gives you a little bit more volume to do that with piezos when you have a PWM on one pin and then you have the flipped PWM on the other pin, you know, you get this differential voltage that's higher. It's a little bit louder. You get like a, you know, about twice as loud. Um, so that's it. And then um, over here is the, you know, this is the button, um, like cluster. So this is molded and then, you, you know, you just pop this in directly. So you don't have to do, you know, any, any work. And then what's interesting is there's usually, yeah, so this is a little notch. So this notch has to match up with here. And that's how they make sure that whoever's assembling this, you know, they quickly assemble it. They, they put it um, the right way up because these have to be facing up. And then this is um, a little spacer, it's a little piece of cardboard spacer. And then this is the LCD. So the LCD is custom, not surprising, there's this glass. And then what's interesting, this is um, what's called Zebra. I'm gonna remove this. You can 
kind of like barely see from behind here. See the little stripes? I don't know if you can see it. Maybe I need something dark. Probably this. Maybe this napkin will give me a little bit more contrast. No. Maybe this stone. Yeah, so you see the zebras. So that's those stripes, those are the ITO pattern contacts that connect to all the segments on here. So there's a lot of segments because remember every single brick is a segment and then there's the segments for the um, the uh, uh, number of lines. And I think it was like seven segments times um, four digits and then like score and whatever, you know, there's all these um, and then like, you know, which one's next. So, you know, easily like over a hundred uh, segments. So you're going to have like, you know, 16, I don't know, it looks like a couple dozen on that side. And then on this side, ditto. And one of the things they do to, um, let's see. Yeah, you can kind of see it there. So one of the things that's done to save money is um well first off there's no backlight here so you know um like the original game boy you have to um play this in a place with light or have a separate um light to save money these are not bonded to pads instead um there's these things called uh, like zebra elastomers and you can see also there's a little conductive um bit here and it looks like it's a solid piece of conductive but it's actually not it's a very fine um layer of conductive and non-conductive and so basically what this means is that this has little threads of conductivity going through it in the z-axis only and it doesn't connect this way it doesn't conduct it this way or this way just down and so if you want to make a lot of contacts like this has you know a couple dozen contacts total you just put these in you know you use um this as a as a holder you put these in and then you use the screws on the back here to press the contacts here against the you know zebra elastomer which then goes to the lcd and as long as you just torque it tight enough and actually if you look at almost every lcd even you know your standard uh 16 by 2 character lcd underneath that black metal piece is a uh, zebra elastomer so i can i can show that uh, maybe on the overhead i'll elastomeric so yeah this is a really good uh diagram okay go to the computer and show so this is what you know they look like underneath and they're for lcds because it's just the lcd itself is is glass and so it's like not easy you know can't solder to it um or use like a smt connector and so you see that there's these patterns on the glass and then this is a very low cost piece of uh, elastic and then here's the contact areas and the pcb so these are custom made i mean you can get this elastomeric stuff you know strips and and it's the patterning isn't generic you, you know it's just very um it's very um finely you know uh sandwiched and so they say like you basically want to make sure you have at least like five of these little conductive bits per uh contact down here but as long as the display is aligned over, it's basically like a little a sandwich conductor and it's it's rubbery. So, you know, with temperature and with pressure, um, it'll still work. So that's um, a fun teardown. Do you have anything else you wanted? No. To so can you go to the overhead? Yeah. All right. So, you know, everyone's going to ask. And so, the you know, the black spot, the uh, blob there. What if you wanted to? get at that what if you wanted to do that what would you do well you could i mean the thing is is that it's not like it's going to be reprogrammable um although i do think it's kind of funny there's like this sda sck down here um although i, I think that's probably a temperature sensor or something it's not necessarily uh you don't want the ice to get too hot yeah you don't think it's to get too hot um i i sort of doubt that it's reprogrammable so you know you would have to mechanically scrap i mean this is very strong you would have to mechanically sure. grind it away and you're kind of likely to um, damage the chip. You might be able to get from the other side, ironically, it might be a little yeah. easier because this is paper phenolic. You could just gently sand it. Some people might want to just figure out what it is. Yeah, you could um you could absolutely uh 
scrape it away, but it's, you know, and then you would use a really high quality microscope to maybe be able to see the, um, uh, maybe there's something on the chip that says who made it or something. It's tough because it's like 500,000 pieces. Like, it's like, you're not going to have custom silicon, but you're going to have customized silicon perhaps at that point. But also maybe like, you know, again, McDonald's could say, hey, we want to release this in other countries. We need the ability to be able to make, you know, 5 million um, yeah. if it becomes popular. Okay. So I have to think about it. So that's a turn out of a McNugget. Um, it's very hard, by the way, once you remove the elastomer to realign it. Usually they have a tool to, to make the alignment. So I'll try, but I did get two. So this is going to be, this might have been our, our sacrificial nugget. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary. Okay, okay cool. All right. So All right. would, would got, that be nothing? That's something else now, too. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna, well, we're gonna, we'll go a little long because, hey, it's, it's not like we have um, like a baby or anything to do. No, with. it's fine. All right. So I'm going to put the nugget over here. Okay. So, um, okay, go to the computer again. Okay, so the next thing is, um, like many people, we saw uh, this ridiculous laptop with an 8088, 8086 processor. Like, no, it can't run Doom because it's like so early. Um, at, and in a laptop, with like original chips and a socket for an 8087. I, I don't know, I think maybe it's a floating point unit. I don't know what the 8087 is. Uh, it has an OPL3 Yamaha chipset, so it can like do more than just plain beeps. And um, it runs MS-DOS and it's just this like funky weird laptop. So we just got it like today. So I haven't done a lot of hacking with it, but um, let's go to the overhead and I'll, I'll show some of this off so this is hold on i'm gonna make some room here so it is a laptop you can even see down here there is a massive four amp hour lithium uh, polymer battery i removed um there was some removable um cover so you can see and replace the chips so this is um the RTC, the HD uh, 465. I don't know how the heck this person got these old chips, whether they found some cache of them and that's what came up with this idea or whether they actually like gutted some uh, 8086 motherboards. Somehow they got like some, you know, PC, IBM PC Junior chips. Um, this here is the 8253. This is the color graphics adapter. So you can do up to... Uh, 320 by 200 two bit color, text mode in four bit color, or graphics 160 by 100 four bit color. That's what it says down here. Oh, it's hard to see. Maybe I'll try to auto focus it. This is the HY638256. Um, this looks like it's just it's an EEPROM, so it's a program chip. Um, 8284, 8288. Yes, yeah, it's like 1990, 93. Uh, this date code 92. So this is made in the you know, mid 90s. So these are a little late in the game, honestly. Um, usually they, they thought these chips would be mostly made in the 80s, but I guess uh, they're made in the 90s. And then um, I don't want to take it out because it's booted right now, but there is a compact flash card, and that's the uh, data storage. Fun fact, um, you know, the first MP3 player I made used a compact flash um, socket. You know, maybe I can, man, what was it called? Um, can you go to, let's see. No, this is, hold on. Let me see if I can find this file. It was the original Minty MP3. Okay, oh my God. I mean, yeah, go on the computer. So I just don't even know. I was like, I was like, oh, I'll look at my Minty MP3 folder. So it's like, I have a folder called old and it's like CVS because like it didn't exist at the time. Um, but let's see if I can open this. Minty MP3 version one on BRD. People are like, how long have you been using EagleCAD? Since 2004. <laughs> <laughs> it's been like 20 years. I just got like a cake. Happy birthday. Um, 
We'll see if this even opens. An Eagle Nine. Oh, it does, but it wants me to sign in. Okay, so uh, just like always fun. So you can see, hold on. This is, uh, see, this is a Compact Flash uh, socket here. So Compact Flash, um, this was with a PIC 16F877, great chip. And then, yeah, this is a Molex Compact Flash. Fun fact, Compact Flash is basically like an IDE drive. You have eight bits of data, you have uh, three bits of address, um, and then I think you have like latch. I mean, this is kind of a terrible schematic, but I think you have like latch, read, write, et cetera. Yeah, Re ready, write, enable, output, enable. Um, Etc. So you can just you talk to it like an ID drive. It just looks like a gigantic memory space. So that would make sense why Compact Flash is is what's used here. So let's go back to the um uh, overhead real fast. Okay. So I don't want to remove it, but I think it's like a two hundred fifty six megabyte Compact Flash. So it's like a little mini ID drive. Um, this is a USB key. So um, there is a USB port, which I was like, whoa, what's up with that? Because uh, obviously USB did not exist at the time um, that these chips were invented. So inside actually is, um, when you boot, it tells you it's got a, a CH375, which is a um, like ISA interface, like, you know, eight, eight bits data, interrupt, chip select, address, write and read latch um interface to usb and they wrote a driver for usb keys um i will note that not everything will work uh i try you know you 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 really want to have something simple <laughs> i think a four i did have a four me, uh, gigabyte sd card micro sd card but that it might have worked but it like hung and i was like well either it's broken or it's just taking forever um so in the shop we have um very small micro sd cards and these are these are like a kind of a godsend whenever you're dealing with very old or like cranky electronics because um they use the original um sd format not like sd x something or sdhc it's like sd and that's it and so um this this one did work and so i was able to transfer some files over um so this is it i'll i'll I forgot the uh, button, so I have to press the little thingy with my screwdriver. So that's just, it just beeps. Um, but it's fairly fast. And then, yeah, I can put in this. There you go. It's got a BIOS. It's booting. It's like a GPL bios and then this is there's a screen protector here but i'm just going to keep it on um it's not ips display it's just kind of a low i mean but like this was like 150 bucks so like what do you expect um and then you can see here yeah the ch375 and then you know you can um plug in the disk drive and then this time when i reboot it'll um recognize it i mean it's it's a thing um i mean it is it is much um less powerful than you remember <laughs> because people are so used to like oh like how bad can it be it's it's not a 386 it's an it's an 8086 okay so i did find this time um a disc so it's like okay i i loaded that usb key on uh disk drive d give it a second i think it has to scan the disk drive yeah you can see like it's like accessing it okay um so the keyboard is not bad and it came with a couple things built in like fox base i this i don't completely understand like the first time you do something it like i think it's like reading the whole fat table and memory or something or it's swapping stuff in and out it takes it takes a moment one thing i did remember is you can keep typing and then like when it comes back because it's handled by dma it's like oh 
CD game. And then I copied over Tetris, but it came with like Arkanoid. Um, I tried Hobbit, but I think um, I think the Hobbit was meant for the 386. It didn't, it didn't run. I think I was a little bit optimistic from when uh, when it came out. So this is um, the DOS version of Tetris. I just downloaded this from this site called Abandonware DOS. I just looked for like DOS 8086 games. And then you can run this. But yeah, I mean, in case you're wondering, like, oh, can I run Doom? You can't run Doom. So I believe this only does CGA. I'm going to say no to a joystick. And it doesn't have the audio card working, so you really just get beeps. Let's see. You can do it. Yeah, I mean, I kind of, like, I vaguely remember this, uh, the startup screen. Okay. Yeah, so you can... Yeah, this changes the backgrounds. Not bad graphics. Four color graphics. Whoa. And then uh we'll return a I don't know how you rotate. Question. Not not like that. It's been a while. Okay. Let's see. How do you rotate? Alt shift XYZ. Oh. Q quits. Anyways, I'll remember how to play Tetris later. I'll, I'll practice on my uh, McNugget. Um, so that's the DOS keep, uh, machine. That's it for now. Um, I mean, it's kind of cool. Maybe I'll... I saw some people like yeah. trying to write some assembly code. For yeah, it. someone wants to... Um... They said the brightness wasn't that great, and then they emailed it's, the company, it's and, not... and the company said you can change a resistor out. Yeah, and one thing that's funny is it's like, you know, these these chips were really not meant to run on batteries, so it's like it gets quite hot because it was, you know, it was designed for sitting on a gigantic desktop. So it's amazing that they, they um, squished it down so small. Um, but it did, it did work out of the box, which is quite nice. And um, the keyboard is kind of cool, too. I like It's a nice uh, laptop keyboard. Not sure what it was used, recycled from. But, I mean, obviously, it's some, um, you know, it's got a Windows button. Just funny to have it on DOS machine. And this cute, like, DOS sticker instead of uh, Windows 3.1 sticker. Um, anyway, so this is a, it's a cool find. So we'll, we'll take some photos of it. Um, and, yeah, it does, it does run on, on battery. So if you want... Um, I mean, I don't know what text editor you could play, uh, you could run on it. I mean, WordPerfect, when was, what was WordPerfect for? Why does it say Windows? I don't know Windows. Kind of weird. Pretty sure Windows didn't, Windows 3 won't require 386. Oh my god, this is taking forever. That was a mistake. I don't know, just, just try it. Well, I guess Windows 3.0 could run on a 86. I, to be honest, I didn't I didn't use this early of a machine. I didn't only kind of came in to like using DOS at the I guess at the 386 era. Alright, I see a mouse. All right, cool. Nice, cool stuff. All right, well, that's my... Like, I just opened the box today, so right, I'm you, learning stuff. What do you want to do next? Want to do Great Search? Yeah, let's go to the Great Search. Where in the world is that part I need? The Great Search with DigiKey. The Great Search brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. Thank you, DigiKey. Every single week, Lady Ada is a power of engineering to help you. Yes, you find the things that you want on DigiKey.com. Lady Ada, what are you looking for this week? Okay, so let's go to the overhead because I'll show what I'm going to chat about. So on the desk of Lady Ada this week, I took apart this adorable Chicken McNugget um, themed Tetris toy game. We kind of looked at what's going on inside. 
Um, one thing I noticed is that to make its uh, BB blops, it uses a uh, piezo disc buzzer element. And we've talked about and uh, searched for buzzer elements before on um, the Great Search. So let me go to the blog and uh, Great Search. Yeah, go to the computer. Sorry. Don't forget, you can always see all the previous uh, great searches. Um, look at the blog. Um, so, yes, many years ago, November 12th, 24th, 2020. Oh, what a time. Um, piezo and magnetic buzzers. So for a lot of our um, boards, like the Circuit Playground and like the, the Clue and the MagTag, and basically the time, or the macro pad, whenever we, ha we have something that needs to make little little tones, um, not very loud tones, but like a little quiet, you know, just alerts. Uh, I like to use um, magnetic buzzers. And so this is a magnetic buzzer. Um, and they have lots in stock, which is great. So this is kind of the magnetic buzzers I make. My go-to, 7 millimeters by 7 millimeters square. And you give it um, about 3.6 volts uh, waveforms. And, you know, it can make a slightly better sounding than beeps. I mean, the, the trade-off is... It's not a piezo element. A piezo element is like two discs um, separated by this piezo crystal. And when voltage goes across it, AC voltage goes across it, it vibrates. Whereas inside here is actually um, a floating magnetic disc, like a, like a diaphragm. And then there's a coil. It's like a 16 ohm coil or 32 ohm coil. And when the coil uh, has AC voltage going through it or current going through it, it um, lifts and raises the magnet just like a normal speaker. Um, so it's like a little miniature speaker speaker like with the magnetic. So you need fairly a good amount of current um, going through, but the trade-off is, uh, first off, these are pick and placeable, whereas piezos are not pick and placeable. Um, you need to have wire soldered to them. So you, if you saw, um, if you go back to the overhead real fast, I'll show. Um, this, you know, sometimes there's a spring, but um, oftentimes there's wire soldered into one part and the other part of the piezo disc. And then in between, there is the, the crystal. So this is the flat disc, which is what ends up vibrating. And then there's the thin crystal and then a conductive layer put on top, um, which is what these two wires are soldered to. And then again, in between is a um, dielectric of piezo material. So this is not this is a, a capacitor whereas um the magnetic buzzer is an inductor so it changes how you drive it um with a capacitive drive you're going to want to have you know a differential um drive that can handle uh high capacitance with the um magnetic buzzer you're going to want something that's you know i use a, a very small class d amplifier but you'll want like a true class a or class a b amplifier that pushes dc current through not AC. Um, okay, so uh, and does and doesn't have a bias across it, which this, of course, you can have a you can have a bias. It's fine. All right, so let's go back to the computer. Okay, so this is a magnetic buzzer. Again, you know, I use them, but the trade off is they're not particularly loud. Um, you know, they do um, make a fair bit of noise, and you can pick and place them, which is what I like. But they're also going to be more expensive than a uh, piezo transducer. So let's look at piezos and it's not surprising that this toy company that made the tetris toy they made like a half million of these and every penny counts like you want it to be as inexpensive as possible and you don't have to have very good resolution um but you do want to have it be kind of loud so you can hear it whereas our little buzzers are not very loud so um don't forget that piezos can be used both as um voltage to like ac voltage to sound but they can also detect vibration in and turn it into um, a voltage for sensing. So uh, vibration sensors are also piezos, but you want the kind that are like these large disks, which looks just like the thing that we were just checking out. Okay, so let's also look at, only look at active ones to start. Um, they're sometimes called piezo benders because again, they, they bend and flex as the voltage goes across them. And yeah, there's, these start to look pretty good. So we're not gonna look for the exact one. What we want is actually just the least expensive one available. So let's let's say we're, you know, 
we're going to look at at least 5,000 pieces. Um, let's look for ones that are normally stocking and not marketplace. Okay, so, you know, as you can see, they get pretty inexpensive. Uh, 15 cents um, is a lot cheaper than the 80 cents for the magnetic buzzer. Uh, Murata makes a lot of these. Looks like Ola Wolf is another company. Um, this one, that's kind of interesting little, oh, it looks like there's a feedback. So you can, you can read the feedback, which can help you adjust, um, the frequency, the resonant frequency of your piezo, but most of them look just like this, you know, very simple, um, element, you know, you can see they usually don't even have data sheets because, um, they're like, hi, it's just a piezo. There's usually a resonant frequency. Um, and that's like where they're going to be the loudest. And that's based on the size and, and the thickness of the material. Um, with these, you know, they, they have a uh, impedance and the max input voltage, but, um, again, we're running it off of a couple of AA batteries, so we don't have to worry about uh, hitting the maximum. The frequency, the other frequency, it's going to be, you know, it's not like they don't make noise at other frequencies, but that you're going to hear like a louder squeak at, um, you know, this eight kilohertz or 3.6 kilohertz, you know, again, it's meant for like uh, your multimeter, you know, it beeps when you do conductivity testing or your, uh, some, a simple alarm clock, not meant for really making uh very musical tones for this Tetris toy. It works out. Okay. Because you're kind of playing dee, 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 dee. It's not a very symphonic sound. You're looking for just a very basic um, beep when it, you press the buttons is a, a feedback element. Uh, so the next thing is, is that, uh, you know, we want wire terminals. Um, one thing is, you know, springs are kind of interesting. Let's just look at the springs. Um, there are ones that, you know, it's a disc and on your PCB, I've seen this actually on multimeters, you take them apart and instead of wires, because they want, you know, they have a different manufacturability. They, to make it inexpensive, instead of soldering wires to the piezo, they have springs that come out of the PCB. And I think the springs are pick and placeable. And then the springs touch the piezo and the two contact points, and that's how they, they make contact. I think the, um, so far, when I've taken the multimeter apart, that's how that works. But we want with wire leads. So let's check it out. Uh, so wire leads, you know, none of these are going to be, oh, we want the standard style. Again, we don't really care for feedback. So it's a little bit less expensive that way. Different diameters are available. Um, looks like a couple of ones are available. These Murata ones look good. PUI Audio. I mean, they're going to be very generic. And yeah, they're going to be, you know, 40 cents. With water leads, it's nice. It's, you get to skip one step. You can just solder these in or use terminal blocks and you're good to go. Uh, so I think uh, this one's not in stock. So let's go with this one you know in quantity 40 cents got the wire leads oh they're even tinned so like even one less step you have to do um easy to integrate you will want to have something holding up the disc so usually um and you can't of course glue the whole thing because you have to let it resonate within the cavity so um if you go to the overhead again the way this tends to be done is if you look here this is a plastic it's a you know a soft you know abs plastic enclosure and then these are little heat stakes um there's little um parts that are molded in um and there's a little like a like a hot stamp that comes down you place the uh piezo in and there were these little um fingers and then the three-pronged heat presser Majig came down and heated up the plastic and then molded it in place so that this this has nothing underneath it but it's held in place by these um three fingers so you'll want to do something like that or you'll have a you know a cavity with like a little ridge on it so that this can freely vibrate um within your enclosure so this is my pick we can go back to the computer the murata zb 7z sorry the Murata 7BB series comes in a bunch of different uh, diameters. I picked the the larger it is, uh, the louder it's going to be, basically. Well, this little one is going to make a good amount of sound. 
Uh, and then uh, don't forget you'll need um, something to drive it. You'll need a good AC driver for that impedance. 300 ohms is, um, you know, you'll need something, not a back controller pin if you want to get the good amount of sound. And a differential drive, like an H-bridge drive, will also get you um, the best audio output. So it's my pick if you want to add some beeps and boops. Is it research? Where? All right, that's our show for now. Thanks everyone for joining us. And uh, we'll be doing everything during the week as usual. Don't forget we're not shipping orders until Tuesday. We'll see you Wednesday for show and tell and ask an engineer. In addition to all of our other shows. Yeah, we're gonna be using some toy hacking. Yeah, we have some fun stuff that's coming in for the toy hacks. Yeah, so we'll get back into it. Let's, oh, yeah. I didn't even get to show Scott's cool um, design. Well, this is gonna be in the store soon. It's a little right, great. Go on the overhead real fast. Yeah, real fast, sorry. Oh, like, like encore. This is a really long show. Um, Scott and Jepler came up with this idea and uh, they posted up, um, they made a little KiCad generator for, this is aluminum PCB. So aluminum PCBs are very inexpensive. Um, It's cheaper to get a PCB that's aluminum that has like all the cutouts you want than to get a custom stamped aluminum um, piece. So, you know, there's no copper used here. It's just a solder mask, um, silk screen, which of course looks great. And then aluminum, so this is really easy to cut and machine, but it's got, um, uh, these are 0. 0.6 inch grids. And so it's it's perfect for laying out Adafruit boards that tend to have holes on 0. 0.1 or 0. or you know, usually 0. 0.2, but sometimes uh, 0. 0.1 divisible. It's cool to have your project semi-permanent. Yes, this is like kind of nice. Maybe, good idea. maybe we'll do this as a giveaway. We, yeah, we were it's a good idea. talking about doing some giveaways. Yeah, we should. This is a nice one. Maybe we'll do um, some nice text to explain what this is. But yeah. uh, nice work, uh, Jepler and Scott. Um, so they were working on this uh, in in the Slack chat. And the um, I think Jepler came up with this idea for 3D printing. And then Scott, I think, did the KiCad script that would auto-generate, or open SCAD script that would auto-generate these or one of them. And then I said, hey, can you send me some Gerbers? And then I was like, hey, I just ordered 250 of them, and they'll be in the shop like in a week so we're gonna put this in then this into the shop this week and you can see here how you can use a you can either use this as a gigantic ground plane or use nylon screws um to attach your hardware okay anyways that's a sneak peek it's not out yet don't ask bye <laughs>